So in this segment, we're going to be talking about the UK facing a summer of uh, food shortages due to the lack of lorry drivers. So for anyone who hasn't realised yet, lorry drivers are really important for transporting anything uh, huge nowadays. Food, uh, beverages, you know, to keep supermarkets stocked, you need a lot of lorries. The UK are short around 100,000 lorry drivers in part due to COVID and Brexit. It's more down to Brexit than anything mainly because we didn't train enough lorry drivers anyways. Um, there were huge problems of just getting, you know, uh, lorry drivers out of the country. Um, they got stuck um, in Dover, typically. And now you've got to think that with the UK doing um, import checks soon as well, um, from the 1st of January 2021, that's going to cause another bottleneck on the other side, potentially, I think, on the Calais side, um, of drivers trying to get in to the UK. So... The, the problem here is that um, this isn't about import checks. This is just about the general um, staffing crisis within lorry driving. You know, there aren't enough drivers. This is absolutely terrifying because we haven't even started import checks and we're looking at food shortages just because of lorry drivers. In this article, specifically, they talk about lorry drivers. In another video, we're going to talk about the um, shortages in the meat industry, so meat processing. We've spoken previously about farming, so that they and obviously hospitality. So you've got you know at least three pinch points there on the supply of uh, foods, on agri foods. You've got um, a lack of um, staff within farming, a lack of staff within meat processing, and now a lack of staff within lorry drivers. So we'll continue to talk about lorry drivers. So in a letter to Boris Johnson, they have called for these are the um, the experts in the field, industry chiefs. You know, multiple industry chiefs have called on Boris Johnson to intervene to allow Eastern European drivers back into the country on special visas, similar to those issued to farm pickers, warning that there is a crisis in supply in the supply chain. And so what's funny is that we attacked Eastern Europeans relentlessly in this country during Brexit and during the last few years. You know, we said that, oh yeah, we're Britain, we can, you know, British people will do these jobs, etc. Where they are where are these British people to do these farming jobs, to do these meat processing jobs, to do these lorry driving jobs? Maybe it takes a certain type of person to do it because the wages aren't the best within meat processing and within um, agri um, sort of agri-foods. And therefore people don't want to do it. So we were relying on um, pe other people to do those jobs. And what's going to happen here is you're going to see massive wage increases in these industries because they're desperate to hire people. They have to poach staff from other people, which further increases wages. We've already seen that in hospitality. So what you're going to see is a massive increase, I think, within food because you've got foods that are already short shelved. You're going to have a massive pay increase for uh, lorry drivers because they're in demand. They're in huge demand. Um, you know, and going further into this article, it does kind of speak about more of the problems, which is that there's a um, shortage of workers within warehouses and food processing centers also having an impact on uh, packing food for supermarket shelves. So you've got more and more problems here because we are heavily reliant on EU um, EU staff to come here and they're not coming here and British people aren't replacing these jobs. Whether you want to make the argument that it's due to the low wages or the argument that British people don't want to do these jobs because they're very, um, very hard, whichever argument you want to pick, maybe, maybe the, a mix of the two. Um, the ultimate point is that we are looking at facing food shortages because we don't have the domestic staff to do these jobs. You know, you've got, um, you know, people within hospitality, um, Tim Weatherspoon saying that he wants a, a special visa system for people who, um, you know, live nearby in neighboring countries so they can do hospitality jobs where are all the british people at that's the question which does show you that there is a massive um there was a massive overestimation um uh, with the country you know with the people within this country that we would just immediately step in and replace these jobs especially since we've had about what four years no five years to prepare for this since the brexit referendum and we haven't done any preparation a hundred thousand lorry drivers short that's so many so sources at the supermarket chain said the, lo the lorry driver shortage was affecting fresh foods with shorter shelf life. Um, the most, you know, fresh fruit um, and meat has a very short shelf life as is. Um, so that creates a further problem. Um, you could freeze it or chill it ultimately, but then that lowers the value of it. That's another problem. So James Mee, a blueberry farmer, you know, blueberries, some of the best berries out there, said the shortages of uh, food with short shelf life could also hit Wimbledon, synonymous with the British strawberry. Um, you know, I've seen there are massive amounts of strawberries now within supermarkets because, um, you know, uh, strawberries, berries, summer fruits are in season now. 
But the problem is going to be, do you have enough people now to pick all the strawberries? Because we've already heard stories about fresh fruit rotting in the field. And then you've got the further problem of them having to be packaged and then, um, you know, packaged and taken onto heavy goods vehicles, lorries, to be transported to supermarkets. But that's not happening right now because there's a massive shortage of farm workers and a massive shortage of lorry drivers. So you have two bottlenecks there that are causing problems. He warned, Sir James Me, that unless there was government intervention, food could rot in the fields that's already happening, with concerns being raised in the farming community for the late summer grain harvest, in addition to soft fruit. So you have more, um, you know, more stuff going on here within agri-foods, and these farmers are worried now. You know, we can keep mocking them and saying they voted for Brexit, but, you know, now something has to be done at this point, and, you know, we will continue to mock them on this channel, because that's the way this channel is going to be. You will get dunked on relentlessly. But the simple fact is, you know, you vote for your own demise. That's the top and bottom of it. We have been told by the Hornier company that we have used for years that they can only come and pick up fruit once a week. That's how bad the shortage is. You need drivers to come out once a day, but they can only come out once a week. That's how bad the shortage of lorry drivers is. But the fruit only have a five day shelf life. So we need picking up every day, which I'm assuming that was the case before that goods could be picked up every day. But now they can only be picked up every week because of the massive shortage of lorry drivers. If we can't get our fruit into the supermarkets, that's uh, massively significant because that's where people are going to buy them from. The Guardian has spoken to one Polish driver who lived in the country before Brexit, who arrived in Doncaster Sheffield Airport to respond to the crisis, but was refused by Border Force because he did not have enough evidence at the airport to support his settled status claim. And this is another problem where, because everything is digital, that can cause you problems with settled, um, settled claims. That this man could have settled status, but because of the, you know, the fact that it's all digital, it's very hard to prove it. It could be, you know, maybe his internet was out, maybe the system was down. But this is a gentleman here who was coming in to at least, you know, play a part in getting, you know, reducing the... Um, the damage done by the shortage in lorry drivers but the simple fact is he wasn't allowed in um and there's no special visa allowed right now for heavy goods vehicle drivers to come to this country despite the fact that we desperately need them because the government are still going on with this dogma that the private um, industries will fix the problems and the fact that um you know british people will just become lorry drivers that's not happening at scale right now that's the problem there's an enormous shortage of heavy goods vehicle drivers that we estimate at between 85,000 and 100,000 said Richard Burnett chief executive of the road haulage association that's that's a massive shortage of drivers and I cannot stress enough to you that this is causing huge problems within the country um, you know this person goes on to say we are weeks away from gaps on the shelves it's as serious as that and the thing is that's already happening in certain supermarkets you can't get certain fruits and vegetables right now, um, I think mainly because they're not being supplied, whether that's because of the farm, uh, issues at the farm with staff, or issues just with lorry drivers. We are saying that the uh, government, they must put heavy goods vehicles, uh, HGV drivers, on the short shortage occupation list urgently. We need to get a pool of labour quickly because we cannot train them quickly enough and plug this gap, and that's a problem. It does take, um, I think, about two months to become a lorry driver, but you have to pass various tests. You have to be a very competent driver because, you know, driving a lorry is dangerous. You are, um, you know, you have to be very careful of your surroundings and also the fact that your vehicle is dangerous to other road users. That's a problem and you have to pass various tests. It does cost a decent amount of money to become a lorry driver and that's another problem, another barrier for people to get into the industry. Not to mention the fact that it's a very lonely job. You're going to be on your own most of the time on the road away from your family. So these are, you know, various reasons why people might not want to become um, you know, lorry drivers, it takes a certain type of person to do this sort of job. And the point is, there aren't enough people in Britain that want to do it. And this is creating a huge problem. And the government aren't addressing the problem because they, for whatever reason, keep thinking that this problem will solve itself. And of course, they're going to blame industries for not, you know, solving the problem. Shane Brennan, chief executive of the chain, um, the cold chain federation, which represents chilled food warehouses, across the country said that with the easing of the lockdown, demand for chilled food warehouses was at Christmas levels and would get worse as the country approached Freedom Day and hospitality venues open. This is another problem. Once hospitality hits, ma hits maximum capacity, you're going to have loads of people going out for food. And if these restaurants can't get the food that they need, then people are going to notice that if your menu is going to be um, reduced because you know, companies can't get the food in. That's going to cause a problem. When you go to the supermarket and you can't buy sausages because you want to do a barbecue, that's going to be a problem. And, you know, maybe people will finally realise that Brexit, how, how bad Brexit is on certain industries. Or maybe they won't. Who knows? 
He says, I think it's going to be like a series of rolling power cuts in that we are going to see shortages, then shelves replenish, then shortages again. And that's another problem that if you um, if you don't consistently see these problems, you might think oh, it's a one off, but it's not going to be, especially if you live in more rural areas. Um, I can see you having more problems because cities and towns are going to be prioritized because there's more people there and uh, people that live within cities and towns are generally slightly more wealthy. That is going to, it goes on to say, that is going to carry on for as long as demand is unpredictable and labour remains as tight as is. And that's, you know, Brennan, this is a huge problem here that we don't, they don't know how, um, you know, supply is very unpredictable right now. Not to mention the fact that they don't know when this labour shortage is going to be filled. That's another huge problem. And, you know, there are multiple bottlenecks here. The letter to the Prime Minister was sown by, you know, your multiple industry chiefs here, Food and Drink Federation, British Frozen Fruit Federation, Federation of Wholesale Distributors, Cold Chain Federation, British Meat Processors Association, and the Beer and Pub Association. These are all people that have been writing to Boris Johnson. Why? Because they need something to give here. They need him to do something because they, we are looking at more food shortages, and that's going to affect every ind of these industries and the general public. Um, it goes on to say, we firmly believe that intervention from the Prime Minister Cabinet Office is the only way we will be able to avert critical supply chain failings at unprecedented and unimaginable levels. So what Boris Johnson and the Cabinet Office keep saying is that, look, you need to sort this out in-house. You need to start recruiting more British people that live here. You need to sort the issue out. But they're saying, these industries are saying, we cannot do that. You have to help us. And this is what the problem is. You have two ideologies. You know, obviously, these ind industry chiefs being correct here, Boris Johnson and the Cabinet Office being very um, dogmatic and not realising how much damage they're doing. These are the two problems and they're butting heads. Um, this is a thing I didn't understand about a tax loophole, which is um, the closure of the IR35 tax loophole, which forces agencies to pay enough to cover self-employed drivers and national insurance and tax. I assume that agencies if they want to hire um, a lorry driver they would have to pay the minimum they would have to pay is enough to cover uh, national insurance and taxes but again i'm not sure if you know um answer in the comments is this pink bit here so truck driving in the uk has been dominated by eastern european drivers in recent years but brexit and covid have created the perfect storm for the sector because you've got to think that brexit you know you've let go a lot of people from eastern europe who would typically do these jobs and covid has stopped you from getting more drivers in um because of the uh, lack of availability for driving um lorry driving tests says uh, Bennett says we don't know if it's because Europeans who would traditionally be in these roles have left uh, because of Brexit or because of Covid and aren't able to come back yet because of the pandemic see the thing is right um I it's, it's down to Brexit not really Covid is it because if these people wanted to come back I think they would be able to because some of these people would have settled status and if if there are issues with the settled status thing that's a consequence of Brexit not Covid so maybe they went home because the job you know there weren't as many jobs available or whatever you know they feared they wouldn't be able to see their family back home whatever the reason is for them leaving um, they can't come back because if if it's a settled status issue then it's down to Brexit so arguing Covid is not the right one here he said the risk was that unless something was done quickly, supply of food from outside the UK could also be hit. So that's food being transported in to the UK, say, uh, through the Dover Calais crossing down here. Um, so he says, he goes on to say, uh, Brexit checks were, um, were implemented in full on the continent on January 1st, but are being phased in over a year in the UK with lorry parks in Kent and elsewhere not fully operational yet. So we've had about five years, say, four and a bit years to really fix this stuff up and we haven't bothered the lorry park still aren't operational we don't have all the facilities we need to do um import checks and so once those import checks start happening if if and no sorry not if when there are queues at the um you know the entrance into dover from france right once the queues start piling up and there are massive amounts of lorries there these drivers won't bother coming back these companies will reduce exports to the uk because it's just going to cost them too much these drivers aren't paid per hour they're paid for the journey the journey itself and eventually it will come to a point where it's not worth it for them because they're going to be stuck in that queue just like they were stuck in the queue at the start of the year when exports tanked so what's going to happen next year most likely is imports are going to tank because there are a ton of bits of paperwork um you know eu of um sort of eu businesses are going to have to do just to export to the uk there's loads and they might not have the staff to do it, so they might not bother at that point. And yeah, they're going to lose an export market, but more importantly, we're going to lose um, a massive supply of uh, goods, you know, foods, agri-foods um, and other goods. So that's going to cause huge problems here. 
you know, we haven't started doing import checks and we're already looking at a food shortage. That's horrible. That's a bad situation to be in. Um, a department for this, this is the nonsense here. A department for trade spokesperson said it had met industry figures to discuss HTV driver shortages and possible solutions around recruitment and retention. So they said most of the solutions are likely to be commercial and within the industry. So they're saying the onus is with on the within the companies. They have to fix this with progress already being made in key areas such as testing and hiring and a big focus towards pay, working additions and diversity. I mean, that's great. You are if you start increasing wages, you might be able to, you know, encourage more people to start doing lorry driving. But you're talking about 100,000 lorry drivers needed. These solutions may not be enough. And this is a problem. They've put all the onus on the industry. The department said the points-based immigration system makes clear employers should focus on investing in our domestic workforce, especially those needing to find new employment. So they're saying, look, stop looking abroad, stop relying on bloody foreigners, start recruiting people and training people within Britain. But obviously, COVID is a problem with that because you can't do a certain level of driving tests um, because of the fears around COVID, especially as the numbers start spiking. That's another thing to be worried about. So I just, the government's dogmatic approach here, you know, clinging to this Brexit ideology is going to cause food shortages. That's what's going to happen here. And it's sad. It's really sad because it doesn't have to be this bad. It really doesn't, you know. Brexit is going, Brexit was always going to be horrible, but the problem is that the government decided to go through probably the second worst option, which is get a deal, but, you know, kick out foreigners, don't allow them to come back in the country, regardless of how much we need them. And, you know, we're seeing bottlenecks in so many industries right now, in warehousing, lorry driving, in uh, food, um, uh, food picking, meat processing, etc. We're seeing massive shortages of stuff in these industries and each one is having an impact, especially I think the lorry driving one being the worst. And the simple fact is the government refused to do the things they need to do to fix things. So maybe a food shortage is the only way people realise how bad things are now. But then again, they'll probably blame it on something else like foreigners. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.